As I stepped into the Slumgullion stage, I saw that it was a dark night, a lonely road, and that I was the only passenger. Let me assure the reader that I have no ulterior design in making this assertion. A long course of light reading has forewarned me what every experienced intelligence must confidently look for from such a statement. The storyteller who willfully attempts fate by such obvious beginnings, who is to the expectant reader in danger of being robbed or half-murdered or frightened by an escaped lunatic, or introduced to his lady-love for the first time, deserves to be detected. I am relieved to say that none of these things occurred to me. The road from Wingdom to Slumgullion knew no other banditti than the regularly licensed hotel keepers. Lunatics had not yet reached such depth of imbecility as to ride of their own free will in California stages. And my Laura, amiable and long-suffering as she always is, could not, I fear, have have borne up against these depressing circumstances long enough to have made the slightest impression on me. I stood with my shawl and carpet-bag in hand, gazing doubtingly on the vehicle. Even in the darkness the red dust of wingdom was visible on its roof and sides, and the red slime of slumgullion clung tenaciously to its wheels. I opened the door. The stage creaked easily, and in the gloomy abyss the swaying straps beckoned me like ghostly hands to come in now and have my sufferings out at once. I must not omit to mention the occurrence of a circumstance which struck me as appalling and mysterious. A lounger on the steps of the hotel, who I had reason to suppose was not in any way connected with the stage company, gravely descended, and walking toward the conveyance, tried the handle of the door, opened it, expectorated in the carriage, and, and returned to the hotel with a serious demeanor. Hardly had he resumed his position when another individual, equally disinterested, impassively walked down the steps, proceeded to the back of the stage, lifted it, expectorated carefully on the axle, and returned slowly and pensively to the hotel. A third spectator wearily disengaged himself from one of the ionic columns of the portico and walked to the box, remained for a moment in serious expectorative contemplation of the boot, and then returned to his column. There was something so weird in this baptism that I grew quite nervous. Perhaps I was out of spirits. A number of infinitesimal annoyances, winding up with the resolute persistency of the clerk at the stage office to enter my name misspelt on the waybill, had not predisposed me to cheerfulness. The inmates of the Eureka House, from a social viewpoint, were not attractive. There was the prevailing opinion, so common to many honest people, that a serious style of deportment and conduct toward a stranger indicates high gentility and elevated station. Obeying this principle, all hilarity ceased on my entrance to supper, and general remark merged into the safer and uncompromising chronicle of several bad cases of diphtheria, then epidemic at Wingdom. When I left the dining room, with an odd feeling that I had been supping exclusively on mustard and tea leaves, I stopped a moment at the parlor door. A piano, harmoniously related to the dinner bell, tinkled responsive to a diffident and uncertain touch. On the white wall, the shadow of an old and sharp profile was bending over several symmetrical and shadowy curls. I says to Marier, Marier, says I, praise to the face is open disgrace. I heard no more. Dreading some susceptibility to sincere expression on the subject of female loveliness, I walked away, checking the compliment that otherwise might have raised unbidden to my lips and have brought shame and sorrow to the household. It was with the memory of these experiences resting heavily upon me that I stood hesitatingly before the stage door. The driver about to mount was for a moment illuminated by the open door of the hotel. 
He had the wearied look which was the distinguishing expression of wingdom. Satisfied that I was properly waybilled and receded for, he took no further notice of me. I looked longingly at the box seat, but he did not respond to the appeal. I flung my carpet bag into the chasm, dived recklessly after it, and, before I was fairly seated, with a great sigh, a creaking of unwilling springs, complaining bolts, and harshly expostulating axle, we moved away. Rather, the hotel door slipped behind, the sound of the piano sank to rest, and the night and its shadows moved solemnly upon us. It was of no use to consider the statement seriously. It was of no use to accept to it indignantly. It was of no use to recall the many instances where praise to the face had redounded to the everlasting honor of praiser and be praised. Of no use to dwell sentimentally on modest genius and courage lifted up and strengthened by open commendation. Of no use to accept to the mysterious female to picture her as rearing a thin-blooded generation on selfish and mechanically repeated axioms. All this failed to counteract the monotonous repetition of this sentence. There was nothing to do but to give in, and I was about to accept it weakly, as we too often treat other illusions of darkness and necessity for the time being, when I became aware of some other annoyance that had been forcing itself upon me for the last few moments. How quiet the driver was! Was there any driver? Had I any reason to suppose that he was not lying gagged and bound on the roadside, and the highwayman with blackened face who did the thing, so quietly driving me whither? The thing is perfectly feasible. And what is this fancy now being jolted out of me? A story? It's of no use to keep it back, particularly in this abysmal vehicle, and here it comes. I am a Marquis, a French Marquis. French because the peerage is not so well known and the country is better adapted to romantic incident. A Marquis because the democratic reader delights in the nobility. My name is something Ligny. A familiar sound had assured me of his presence in the full possession of at least one of his most important functions. Frequent and full expectoration convinced me that his lips were as yet not sealed by the gag of highwaymen, and soothed my anxious ear. With this load lifted from my mind, and assisted by the mild presence of Diana, who left, as when she visited Endymion, much of her splendor outside my cavern, I looked around the empty vehicle. On the forward seat lay a woman's hairpin. I picked it up with an interest that, however, soon abated. There was no scent of roses to cling to it still, nor even of hair oil. No bend or twist in its rigid angles betrayed any trait of its wearer's character. I tried to think that it might have been Mariar's. I tried to imagine that, confining the symmetrical curls of that girl, it might have heard the soft compliments whispered in her ears which provoked the wrath of the aged female. I had dozed repeatedly, waked on the threshold of oblivion by contact with some of the angles of the coach, and feeling that I was unconsciously assuming, in imitation of a humble insect of my childish recollection, that spherical shape which could best resist these impressions when I perceived that the moon, riding high in the heavens, had begun to separate the formless masses of the shadowy landscape. I was wondering how late it was, and thinking that if the horses of the night traveled as slowly as the team before us, Faustus must have been spared his agonizing prayer when a sudden spasm of activity attacked my driver. A succession of whip-snappings, like a pack of Chinese crackers, broke from the box before me. The stage leaped forward, and when I could pick myself from under the seat, a long white building had in some mysterious way rolled before my window. It must be Slumgullion. As I descended from the stage, I addressed the driver. I thought you changed horses on the road. So we did, two hours ago. That's odd. I didn't notice it. Must have been asleep, sir. Hope you had a pleasant nap. Bully place for a nice, quiet snooze. Empty stage, sir. Thank you for watching this video. 
please like, share and subscribe to the channel to see the latest videos. Thank you.